Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and I'm here to talk to you about some first world problems, or at least show you a behind the scenes look at what I did with the NZXT H9 Elite and some of the thought process that went into the review, which you might have seen. This is going to be a behind the scenes look at a number of different things that I did because I want to talk to you about the build and the changes that I made to it, the thought process behind it, and why I did what I did. So you might have seen this video, essentially, I built the H9 Elite with a number of F120 RGB Duo fans from NZXT, their own motherboard, and the Kraken Z73 all-in-one cooler, which has been one of my favourites for a long time. It's a nice 360mm cooler with a display on it, and the end result was pretty nice. But roughly at the time of doing this, I was also approached by Corsair and asked if I'd have a look at the AF120 RGB Elite fans. And I thought this might be an interesting opportunity to revisit the case. Now, in the past, I've done videos where I've done a build guide on a case and then I've gone back to it, revisited it with different fans. I thought it might be fun to do that again. But in this instance, rather than doing two different videos, one revisiting and one with a standard build, I thought it might be better to mix the two together and do a really detailed review. Because when I built the H9 Elite, what I did was I used the NZXT fans, side mounted the radiator and set it up that way. And what I thought I could do here was change the layout and test it in two different ways with two different lots of fans. So here you're seeing some of the process and the effort that goes into that. Obviously building a PC, and then unbuilding it to rebuild it is quite an undertaking. And some of that footage is obviously just going to waste in terms of me taking the thing apart, because who wants to watch a PC being unbuilt? That's quite an unusual niche of YouTube content, potentially. Maybe it's something I should investigate. But here you can see me taking it all apart. So I've obviously gone through the process of building the entire thing, and now I'm having to take it out remove all the fans, remove the radiator, which you can see, as I said, is mounted to the back instead of the top because I wanted to test to see if you could do push-pull on there and sort of the details of the case. Interesting highlights, by the way. If you want to check out the review or the full build guide, I'll link to those in the description if you've not seen them already. But you can put the radiator at the back of this case and hide it away so you can see it's mostly hidden, which is pretty neat. So I'm removing the radiator, cleaning up the CPU and the pump head because I will probably reuse that all-in-one cooler at some point in the future. Obviously making sure I've got all the bits stored away nicely so they don't get lost. I might well use these fans again because they're also pretty nice. But I meant I had to spend an evening basically taking everything apart, unscrewing all the fans, removing them from the fan trays, removing them from the case unwiring everything and this is one of the reasons why i often say in my videos that i leave a bit of a mess at the back my cable management isn't great and there's a reason for that there's usually two reasons for that one is i want to be able to demonstrate how much space there is at the back of the case if you are messy with the cable management but also because of things like this so if i'd gone to the trouble of cable tying all of these cables down now having to take them out to swap them out for different fans would have caused me even more headaches in terms of having to cut the wires or at least cut the ties and not cut the wires because that would be not ideal and then get it back into this state. So obviously I've stripped everything out apart from the power supply unit and the motherboard and I left the vertical GPU bracket in there as well because I thought I'd reuse that. Anyway, at this point, of course, they also sent me the H170 Elite Capolix. So I thought I could combine those fans and this cooler into that case to make a bit more unique content, but I foolishly didn't contemplate the size of the thing because I just agreed to it. And this is the first world problem part of the video without really thinking about it, because this is a 420 mil radiator <laughs> and that is not gonna fit in the H9 Elite. And it only dawned on me when I unboxed the H170i realized that it was 420 and then thought uh oh now i do have the fractal torrent which was my main case for a while it is up the loft and i did think about getting that down and reusing that because you can front mount a 420 mil radiator on this because it is a beast of a machine with massive fans on it as standard that you can see here but what i wanted to do instead is to get a new case so use an opportunity to make more content so <laughs> I'm now making myself more work because I've purchased the Lian Li Land Cool 3, which does take a 420mm radiator, as you can see, top mounted. And it also has some flexibility in other mounting options for other radiators. And naturally, being a Lian Li case is also highly flexible 
So there's lots of potential there. I also have this ROG Strix motherboard, which is an AMD Ryzen. And I've got a Ryzen 7 700X. So a, this is going to be the first AMD build I've done since the Corsair 7000D. So that's going to be an interesting one. But that'll give me the opportunity, obviously, to reuse these AF120 fans and that cooler in a new case. So a lot more content coming soon, which is a benefit of this, but also a big undertaking. But anyway, at the time of obviously getting the AF120 Elite fans in, I realised multiple options here. I can obviously not only use them for the review of the case with the two sort of setups, but I could also use them for a wiring guide. So I've done a video previously on the Corsair wiring logic of their fans, but I thought it might be fun to do a dedicated one just for the AF120 Elites. So I've shown the setup process in this case, how to wire them, how to connect them up in various different ways, and the sort of logic and setup of that. And I actually thought about the way to make this a more detailed video. And again, I'll link to that in the description, but I basically wanted to go into as much depth as possible. So I showed not only the wiring, but also the setup in IQ and what you do in terms of the RGB lighting and things because I wanted to make it really in-depth, as I do with a lot of my content, and hopefully it's appreciated by people. So showing the logic of the positioning of the fans and all the different things, including how you can mount them, obviously, on a all-in-one cooler. So this is the H150i Elite Capelix, which doesn't come with these fans as standard, obviously. So I'm setting up with different fans on a radiator that doesn't usually have them in a case that it you know, NZXT and course they probably don't want you to use them in um, because they'd rather use NZXT fans in an NZXT case or Corsair fans in a Corsair case. But here we're testing two different setups because it will be a useful way to demonstrate not only the different performance of the fans, but also the flexibility of the case. So in the original build, I had two 140 mil fans on the bottom and then multiple 120mm fans everywhere else. Now I've got 120mm fans throughout. Obviously I've got the radiator top mounted in this instance instead of mounted on the side. So there's potentially more intake. I also have lost the Zotac 4080 that I used in the original build video because I had to go back to Zotac because it was only a review sample. And now I'm using 3060 Super, but in the same sort of position as a Founders Edition card. And actually looks quite nice like this, but significantly smaller than the Zotac card. Anyway, I got into this part of the build process and then I came across another first world problem, which I had accounted for. But when I turned the PC on, not all the fans lit up. And that's because I hadn't got the wiring wrong because I hadn't booted to, into Windows properly. But also at this point, I didn't have the necessary stuff to work here. Because actually, if you've got this many fans with the RGB lighting node with the Corsair Commander Pro or Commander Core and other bits in there, you'll find obviously you've got a lot of fans connected up, but those things also require USB connection. So the lighting node or RGB hub, the Commander Core XT and the pump all require USB connection to the motherboard. And there's only two connections on this motherboard and on most motherboards, which means that you then have an issue. Now this is great actually, because it gave me an opportunity to then buy another thing. So I've been spending a lot of money Around here, although this is actually very affordable. This is a basically a USB splitter that puts two USB connections into a single cable so you can plug in two things into it, for example, two fan controllers or two RGB controllers into this little board. And then that then has one output USB connection that then connects up to the motherboard. So this is something I regularly recommend and I used it in the fan wiring guide and I'd often suggest it to people when they ask what they can do if they haven't got enough USB ports. So you can just connect this up and now that will work. So now, obviously, I can power the display on the cooler and all the RGB lighting on the fans. And there we have the final product in a very different setup to what you saw in the beginning. So obviously, different aesthetic, different airflow and other things. Now, I also benchmarked both setups to demonstrate the cooling difference in them. I didn't notice much difference in terms of the fan noise and other things, but obviously aesthetics and the cooling was ever so slightly different, but here you've seen an in-depth look into what I did with this build and the thought process and the effort that goes into it. And hopefully you've enjoyed it. Go check out the other videos if you haven't seen them already. This has been The Provoke Prawn. Thanks for watching.